So understanding the reproductive strategy of plants is important. We're going to look at a couple different ways and see how they relate to cannabis in particular and what makes that plant unique or different than some other plant species. So there's two main types of reproductive strategies. There's monoecious, which are male and female reproductive organs produced on the same plant. This is common in oak trees, corn, and squash plants. And there's dioecious, where a plant only produces male or female reproductive organs. And this is found in ginkgos, asparagus, and also cannabis. Regardless of the reproductive strategy, the end goal is to produce viable seeds. So looking at the monoecious or hermaphrodites, as sometimes they're referred to, these are plants with both male and female flowers. This limits the travel distance for pollen and can help allow for a few individuals to populate an area. So this monoecious, we see a male flower and a female flower. This is the male flower here, produces the pollen. This is the female flower that's producing, in this case, the small pumpkin that will grow and mature and have the seeds in it. Dioecious plants, though, this reproductive strategy requires transfer of pollen from one individual to another. And here we have a male plant. This plant will only produce male flowers. This is a female plant and will only produce female flowers. As a result, the genetic variability will increase. So if we had a separate plant producing pollen and a separate plant producing um, female portions, they would need to transfer that pollen over, which can help increase the genetic vari variability for this particular species. A dioecious plant, for example, cannabis, produces male or female plants, not and, it's or female plants. The male plants only produce pollen, and the female plants only produce buds or seeds upon successful pollination. So where do cannabis seeds come from, or hemp seeds come from? Uh, seeds are a result of a successful pollination. What does that mean? Well, the poll pollination is pollen fertilizing an ovum or an egg that will result in a seed. The production of seeds requires the plant to devote most of its energy to the next generation, as seeds require energy storage, protective seed coat, um, and a whole bunch of other things. Now, how does seedless cannabis produce? How, how is this possible? Well, kind of no major secret. These, the whole goal is to grow a female plant and simply do not allow pollen to come in contact with it. It'd be like we're growing a flower here and not allowing a bee, in this case, to come in contact with it. Here we see a research plot here, and we see the bags over all of these flower structures. This would be eliminating uh, pollen transfer or allowing specific crosses to be made. So how is seedless cannabis produced? Well, it's quite simple. You just prevent pollen from coming in contact with the female flower. Reason why uh, most growers are only growing male, are only growing females, and males are discarded, is males will not yield buds that will produce much in the way of cannabinoids. So value of male plants in bud production is basically zero. Uh, growing males is more important for breeders, but not for people looking to produce cannabinoids. Male plants should be identified early and discarded since they do not yield much uh, and their pollen could jeopardize female plants from producing quality buds. Quality buds in having a plant produce higher cannabinoids, if it's producing seeds, its, it's cannabinoid production will suffer. The only value for males is for breeders for their pollen to create viable seeds to produce genetic variation or grow more plants, but for most people, uh, males are simply discarded as soon as they can be identified because their quality or cannabinoid production is quite poor in comparison to female plants.